Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your host, Jason Fernandez. And me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Welcome back to the best hour of their day podcast. As usual, Fern here with Ackerman, but very special guest. If you go back ooh, almost two years now, James Fitzgerald has been on the podcast in the past, um, but we're having him back on today. I'm super excited about this. And here's what we've talked about it recently, Fern, you and I, that something missing in the CrossFit world is this idea of like knowing your roots and remembering where you came from. And I don't know, based on James putting his head in his hands, maybe he doesn't want us to remember him, but, <laughs> but, no. but I think it's really important if you're doing CrossFit in 2021 and you are not sure who James Fitzgerald is, take a pause here, go Google it. Hopefully we'll tell you a little bit about him, but first ever CrossFit games champion and really I, I believe, aside from that, influenced a lot of what's going on today. You were one of the first people out there that said, hey, I'm going to put some programming out there for people to hit. I know back in uh, 2010, 11, maybe, Albany CrossFit, we were following uh, OPT programming, now OPEX. I forget what it was at the time. There were three categories. It was like move. Can you remind me of those, James? Do you remember your own? Do you remember what they were? Yeah, function, being, and will. Yeah, fun there we go. And, so none and of them were move. Yeah, got it. None right. of them were move, but you know, you would move during them. But the, you know, <laughs> it, it, it was really great stuff back in the day. And and you you were far ahead of the curve. I think you probably continue to be ahead of the curve. Um, but we're excited to have you on. So so welcome. And if you're watching the video, we were kind of talking. Look at all the books behind them. How many of those books have you read? Um. There's probably 10 that I haven't, I would say. So I don't know. We'll, what we'll, call, we'll call that all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what is, well, before we get into anything fitness, what is your reading routine? I think that's an overlooked art this day and age. And I think, it's, you know, especially in the CrossFit world, like people are like, more time at the gym is better. And Fern and I are very much of the belief, like, hey, maybe less time is better and get some hobbies and educate yourself. So mm -hmm. you seem to be, as busy as the next guy. How do you find time to read that many books? Yeah. Um, well, I have lots of time. I don't have a lot of responsibilities in my current, you know, job. Um, so, <laughs> so I have lots of time. <laughs> uh, really? Um, I don't, there's I don't really the answer. Have, yeah. There's the really answer. To create a time. company that you get to leave, let other people run. So do the hard <laughs> stuff for like 10, 20 years. And then you'll have time to read. Is that what you're saying? Is that the that's, plan? That's pretty much the case. Um, <laughs> so I have lots of time for it. <laughs> nice. Well, what's your, what's cool. your, just out of curiosity, James, what's your favorite like genre of reading? Obviously you read a ton of, yeah. you know, uh, books that would fall in the fitness realm, whether it be programming, exercise, physiology, stuff like that. But do you like to read anything yeah. other, outside of that? Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. I, uh, over the past, uh, I don't know why I got into more like, I guess, technical areas of reading and really enjoying that. But um, I was deep inside that for a long while. And I guess over the past decade, I've really found appreciation through uh, reading a couple of books that are that are not inside of, let's call it fitness, that uh, that were more uh, imaginative and, and creative in nature. And uh, that really opened my eyes to maybe something I've been, I was missing inside of inside of it. Um, and then uh, more recently, I guess over the past couple of years, I've been uh, really interested in uh, the uh, the background information of all the, uh, the 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 cultural things. You know, the things that uh, people want to talk about, um, or you just feel that it's a it's a big thing. Um, yeah, I've just been trying to dig into uh, to some of those readings when you when you're that kind of stuff you're talking about art is a little bit history history based uh politic politics religion type stuff or like, yeah yeah okay. um like um uh the condemnation of blackness uh okay. racism racism in multiple different right. shapes and forms um what is race mm -hmm. uh the 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 of course you know 
the, evolu the evolution of Homo sapiens is, is included in that conversation. Um, so that kind of stuff, stuff that, you know, you can, you can hear some things, but, uh, yeah. um, that's yeah, deep I, reading. I, it's always been one to, yeah, you know, well, again, I got time, so why not, yeah. like, <laughs> why not read, uh, you know, um, you read, you read a half a book and you contemplate your life second. for a cup for a week. Yeah. Instead of a 15 second, uh, right. bit on something that really works for the listener. Um, I just got time to read like 12 books on a really complicated uh, topic. So that's cool. So more recently, I think that's what's been kind of interesting to me. Uh, and you mentioned a couple of other ones too. Um, you know, origin, meaning, morality, yep. faith. Yeah. Very cool. James Peterson type stuff. Not James. Yeah. Yeah. George James Peterson. Peterson. Jordan, Jordan Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a, that was a good slip though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, you know, I've read his two books on the, on rules and I forget, I don't even remember what they were called. I'm sure, but he's a fellow Canadian, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was given, uh, maps of meaning actually way back before prior to, uh, Jordan's more recent rise to prominence with his, um, really in acceptance to, uh, to bill the bills that were proposed in Canada. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I thought it was very confusing, actually, um, his, his original stuff. Um, yeah. Well, let's take a turn in chat fitness, would you, Fern? Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, So in that stuff, James, you're, you're largely kind of known for originally, you know, OPT back in the day, if you want to go in the Wayback Machine, the journal. Um, well, actually, the first time I was actually... I mean, first time I was ever exposed to you, James, was like the original Garage Games in Georgia, like in two thousand and eight, maybe. Like, I mean, that was really long. Yeah, time it was ago. definitely that time frame. Brandon yeah. was there. Steve Mullen. Yep. Uh, uh, Nate. Uh, Wars, Nate. Rob Odison. Yep. yep. The Robot Gorilla. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Which was uh, Rory. Yep. Um, Trying to think who else uh, is I don't there. Even, oh, uh, Unit was there too, I think, right? Oh, that's no. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That was, that was, that was fun. Yeah. Cold. Um, yeah. Anyway, but, um, and then you, and then from there, you were really, you very quickly made a decision into programming, primarily what you're known for at this point programming. You're a little, little choppy, yeah, yeah. You're a little choppy, but basically, what he asked you, the same James, okay. was you, you you made the transition from being the fittest to being the at the you know the preeminent programmer aside from CrossFit.com. Yeah, well, two of those statements are not not truly real. Um, <laughs> 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 guess which one uh, guess which one is there? well well both i mean um you know it it it's you know outside looking in it perceived you could perceive that right it's like oh you're the fittest and then you moved into programming no uh i was programming since the mid 90s um gotcha. and, uh, i had always i had always done this you know just basically uh, investigated things. If it's not obvious to our first topic we talked about in reading, I like to dig in hard on stuff to try to find some truths inside of them, you know? So if I accept it and I think it's something that's interesting, it's going to help others around me, et cetera, then I'll go all in on it. So I did that previously to like strongman, bodybuilding, you name it, whatever was, whatever was like current for the young coach. But, and then the uh, fittest, you know, well, that's all always up for argument. Um, I was uh, very lucky, uh, the stars aligned. Um, I was online working out against basically a computer and times for three years in the morning time. And, uh, and uh, if you were gonna bring all those people together in person, it should make sense that one of those individuals would rise to the top, um, and that was me. So, uh, so I just wanna clarify a change in the language there of what yeah. seems like a presupposition of like, this aha moment of programming. But, gotcha. you know, I, was, I was programming for a decade prior to prior to that. Well, that's not necessarily what I was insinuating. I would, just from the outside. That was me. In, that was me, Fern. I was. Yeah, that's one. that's kind of what you're known for now. Obviously, you don't just become good at programming overnight. That takes 
many, many, many years to even have like what I consider to be a rudimentary grasp of programming. So, um, but that's kind of the lane that you occupy currently, right? As far as like in the space, right? But you came to prominence via that, actually yeah, that's like training, and training, yeah. That's hard, too. I mean, it just depends upon, I'm sorry to just get drowned on a point, but no, 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 you're that's because you said that's what you're known for now, right? And it's, no, it's not. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't know me. <laughs> um, so uh, in the, uh, in, you know, our little ecosystem um, for CrossFit and CrossFit competition, it would make sense, yes, that a number of people who are still inside of that world, if they do remember what that is, um, the concept of OPT, then, you know, I think programming would be a part of that. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, um, I'm, if anything, within the fitness universe, without even having a name, um, I would, uh, I would much rather, uh, be known for education of coaches, coaching education. Um, and so there's probably one point in time for sure that, uh, programming was the forte. So, I mean, that's a good segue. So without, cause I don't want to put words in your mouth and, and, or any of that stuff, just what it, the idea of OPEX, explain that to people. Yeah. Global fitness education company, um, where we're trying to, as a mission, you know, we don't have a language that we've, uh, really clarified. We're still working on that, but it's the raise to raise the value of fitness coaches, um, and underlying that that's not public is to, you know, is to somewhat make an impact on that movement, whatever that is. Um, and so how do we do that? Will we, uh, we offer uh, online education um, and inside that education basically talks about the principles of um, behavior, exercise and nutrition as to how it applies to the physical uh, to the physical uh, manifestation that we call fitness or training, et cetera. So that's what OPEX is. Okay. And then there's pro there's probably, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is because I've dabbled in it a little bit. I've, I've read quite a bit of your stuff, but there's two primary lanes there. So you've got coaches and then you guys also um, still work with gym owners as well, right? So you have OPEX gyms out there who are primarily using your model slash methodology in order to run their facilities. Um, so yes. there's two, there's two lanes there. Um, and then, well, technically well, three, so a, then you it's, have, a, the, uh, it's a lane that's underneath the education. So right. Yeah. Global, global fitness education, right. Is the primary. And then like we like to say what you want to do with that, you know, we would, we would love it if you had, uh, you know, the money, uh, the time and the energy, uh, to work against that massive resistance out there of uh, putting together a micro gym and making it look like that and calling it OPEX. I mean, we'd love that, but that's not the, uh, you know, in terms of systematics, it's not two lanes. Everything's mm -hmm. underneath CCP and like that's one right. option, if I make sense, underneath it. Yep. Okay. And then what's your, what's your biggest pool of people that you work with? So a lot of, you do have a lot of athletes that you guys work with or people who are use your, your, who, who you coach, and then you have the education portion of it. And that has multiple pillars, if you will, but where would you, where would you say you direct most of your time and energy these days? Uh, as to coaching coaches to re reframe okay. your wording. Uh, we don't work with athletes. I think okay. you're thinking of, uh, um, a separate company that's a spin that was, that's outside of OPEX now. It's online coaching for mixed modal athletes. Okay. Um, they used to be called, well, in multiple different ways, big dogs or what Jason probably knew. Yeah, about yeah I remember that. Yeah. Early yeah. days. Um, so that, that's, that's outside of OPEX. It's not in, it's not underneath the lane. Um, Is that still under so, your purview? What's that? Still under your purview? Yeah, indirectly. Like, I mean, if we wanted okay. to create a paper trail of ownership and intellectual property and, management and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. But, um, it's not where the energy is. Uh, OPEX energy is on to answer your question. OPEX energy is, is not on athletes. It's on what we call humans, uh, which are people that are trying to reach as far as possible into the vitality model. Um, so our end product of that knowledge and information goes through the fitness coach that I'm teaching and then hopefully gets to the end consumer, um, inside of that, uh, that crazy process we call fitness.
And then with, with regard to coaching coaches, because like we just do that in a separate lane, obviously. But what is one of the you personally, right? Whether this is outlined in the curriculum or not, what is an outcome that you're looking for in a coach that comes into your ecosystem under OPEX? Yeah, good question. It's a uh, probably an open mind. You know, I want them to be critical thinkers. Um, because we're in 2021 too, I, I, I do, I'm very heavy handed with this um, concept the whole time of, uh, you know, in, in, trying to be in a few words, but uh, just the, the madness that's inside of the current landscape. I, I'm, I'm really, really heavily invested in, because it seems like most of the energy of my time based upon all the coaches that have come in front of me is uh, a lot of them are not uh, uh, awake enough to see the landscape. So they're, they're, they're basing all of their ideas on what they're going to do for coaching, uh, unfortunately, on, a, on j just a system, basically, that has been trying to create dependency um, and trying to create uh, commercial interest of the commoditization of fitness. And, uh, and I've been a part of that. So I can get inside and say, listen, you got to wake up to this. Um, and so the whole time I'm pretty much, uh, pretty much, uh, doing that. Um, so I hope I answered your question in terms of like, what the, what the, uh, what was the question? I think so, but would you, well, yeah, would you, so I'll just go with that. Could you elaborate on when you say awake w w with regard to what, like, so what yeah. specifically, what, what would you say is you, think is incorrect or broken or however you would phrase it. I, I, those are my words. Yeah. Yeah, man, the list is long, but, uh, uh, how about this one? Uh, the high intensity model is a short term duct tape fix for vitality. Um, so I want people to wake up to that, you know, uh, that could be one, uh, another one, uh, the one RM makes absolutely no sense ever in the lifetime of a human for physical participation. Can you, is he frozen, frozen there? I think yeah, frozen. I'm, I there was frozen. Um, oh, yeah, you were frozen. Yeah, yeah. Right after you dropped that uh, powerful statement, you froze. And now he's gone. He's gone. Just like that. He's, he's like Kaiser Soze. He dropped the mic. He, he dropped he's the gone. mic. He I'm out like, of here. One RMs are dumb, and I'm out. Yeah. And I'm out. There he's yeah. back. <laughs> um. Can you expand more on that? On both of those statements, the green I, think room. They're, I think they're. It's. Am oh, I? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got you. Okay. Yeah. So expand more on both of those. A, just how CrossFit's yeah. kind of like the duct tape, and I B, didn't say that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your exact word? Sorry. He said high intensity. He said high intensity. The high intensity, high intensity methodology okay. high is intensity a duct methodology. tape approach to short term yeah. results. Uh, okay. and it's, you know, uh, listen, <laughs> by I'm the way, sure, we, I'm not we, sure you if know, your listeners want to go down that rabbit hole for 90 minutes because, uh, it's no, but for an hour, I, for an hour, know, maybe I'm back up <laughs> a comment that may disappoint some people, but, um, well, listen, we disappoint wow, people every day, James. I so <laughs> I can create a list, you know, that's, that's long. Um, Here's another one. Hypertro hypertrophy is the stupidest thing that was ever placed inside the academic model for resistance Ooh. training. Um, okay. You know, here's another that's one that's a little bit more bigger. Um, the concept of moving every day and eating really good foods is easy as fuck. And the fitness industry has made it so complex to make money. <laughs> All of these that? things you're saying are great. And, and just for the record, I believe, James... Well, yes, our listeners are, are primarily people that spend time in a CrossFit gym. We have a very open-minded bunch. We've had people from all walks of life on, you know, people that are for CrossFit, against CrossFit, have been part of CrossFit. So, you know, obviously I don't have to tell you to speak your mind. You're doing that. But our listeners like hearing this stuff. I can tell you that. I would love to hear more about your hypertrophy because there's this push in the CrossFit world these days. And I think it's – I think you can actually say – Part of it stems from your first statement of, I don't want to misquote you again, but high intensity movement, et cetera. And I think people get burned out of it. And then they're like, okay, I've kind of burned myself out. 
let me find another avenue that can keep me in the gym and maybe just keep me looking how I want, but, um, you know, not have to work quite as hard. So when you say like hypertrophy is the, I've, again, I don't want to misquote you. Like, is the stupidest said, academic pursuit that's ever been inside fitness. Stupidest academic pursuit that's ever been inside fitness. Expand on that, please. <laughs> we fell in love with the late 70s, early 80s concept of the body beautiful. Um, no, listen, if, if, I want, if I wanted to even lean into like being on the side of something, I'm not going to quote Greg Glassman, but Greg Glassman said the same thing in different words in the early aughts, right? Mm -hmm. And just he just had other things to take care of, I would believe. I'm not going to make, you know, make um, a claim that I know what he was thinking, but he had a lot of other things to take care of. So by giving a middle finger to that one concept plus 18 other that was inside of what I also considered nefarious actions inside of science for physical participation, um, you know, you had the growth of a numerous these things, right? So at the end, who wants to get bigger, right? Young boys in their basement on T Nation looking to buy supplements, right? And you attach all these emotional things to it, right? Which is so fucking crazy. You know, it's basically, we joke at this, but we all joked about like the guy getting the sand kicked in his face with the Bill Starr shit back in the day. Like we joked mm -hmm. about that. That's the same fucking thing in a different way that was sold in hypertrophy. And because now we have like institutions and entire organizations focused on knowing the secrets behind building muscle, we think that makes sense when it transfers over to fitness. Oh, but James, there's 20 years of research. My whole life has been dedicated to the concept of hypertrophy. I fucking don't care. It makes no sense. Who wants to get bigger? Why would you want to get bigger? Bigger makes well, that, fucking absolutely no sense. You become less efficient by getting bigger. Well, that's, that's where I like was going to go. Is that my original the, thought the was genetic issues with getting bigger, more calories are required getting bigger. Um, you know, we, we haven't even talked about sex differences in terms of the base endocrinology required to get bigger. Like it's, it's, it's a never ending, it's a never ending back and forth because of this 30 year base support of all the research, right? where anyone can cherry pick 28 different studies showing the benefits of hypertrophy, but no one wants to say, yeah, but isn't it just fucking stupid as a proposition? Like, why would <laughs> that, you do it? That's where I was going to go is that just, it has no value, really. There's no value. There's, it doesn't add anything. The secret is Tren or a, a whole lot of other drugs that you could take. That's the secret to, to getting hypertrophy. You could do all the, all you want, but that's anybody in that realm there are natural bodybuilders don't get me wrong but like yeah. we should all just stop we should all just stop fooling ourselves like everybody that lives in that world is dealing with some degree of performance enhancing drugs in order to get hypertrophy uh i would disagree with that statement but i would i would say that they have the intentions there's a lot in that world with the intentions of getting bigger right um and you know to to kind of find a halfway there I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the bodybuilding concept. I actually push it quite hard in terms of my I don't principles, i.e. like do resistance to just improve your strength or to learn about movements for your whole life. Do you see that? Now, if you get bigger, I really fucking don't care. I honestly don't care. Right. Is it possible you get bigger, though, that this is the point I think you're making? It's possible. I mean, there's for some sure. people that may actually gain muscle. And I would think I would think that's an innate process of your uh, recognition and perception of these opposed demands that your body deals with. Do you see how that's different than, oh fuck, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get bigger. Now that's a whole different uh, you know, can of worms uh, for, for, for the process. And you see, even when you go down the road of getting bigger, it's, it, like, it just ends up in this corner of nonsense, honestly. And no one well, just wants to back up and be like, listen, <laughs> What's the power in it? You know. Uh, well, what, I don't. I don't think most people would actually, it, with the exception of the bodybuilding world, most people that would uh, like live in our, like our kind of space. We'll, we'll just call it like in general G GPP or generally general fitness space. Like, don't disagree. Um, I would actually like to you to unpack the the one rep max idea. Yeah, you're never. I mean, most people in their life are never going to have to use that 
maximal voluntary contraction where there's an actual mechanical, massive mechanical plus massive central nervous system demand for a really tough contraction. This doesn't mean that some people cannot express this in their life after 20 to 30 years of contraction experience. But uh, besides, you know, the odd story of someone, you know, lifting a fucking car off a child or something like that, you know, and, and that will never be studied. But that's what's called strength deficit from an adrenaline reserve, right? People have the capabilities of doing really crazy shit, but you don't have to prepare for it in your gym. Because number one, it's not apparently, if it's not obvious, you don't have to fucking do any of those contractions for your whole life anymore. Maybe back in the 1200s, if we had to be a fucking Spartan or you had to like lift a heavy rock eight times a day or something. Okay. And then what the funny thing around that is that you're not even fucking training to do that. You're just doing the lifting of the rock and throwing the spear. So anyways, so the one RM again is very similar to the hypertrophy concept that it has all these underpinnings of performance, right? And so people see the one RM, but they also see athleticism and beauty and performance. And guess what you're going to get inside of that? The ability to market, the ability to sell something, the ability to sensationalize something, the ability to sell the intense concept, right? Because 1RM is the classic definition of the hardest you could possibly work, right? So who doesn't want to like inspire millions of people to do that, right? So you could see all the, all the emotion that can be built inside of it. But again, top down, looking at it, it's like that kind of contraction makes absolutely no sense absolutely no sense to like human vitality human vitality transferability you know i could go on and on uh, the one rm is actually a much easier one to pick on by the way than the high intensity model that i first proposed but the uh, i actually i actually don't disagree with you that much with the exception of like there's a competition and we have to create some distinction right? Like just for the purposes of that specific thing in order to determine a placing, right? So I actually don't agree with you. Inside the affiliate, we use it very, very sparingly. Um, so is that to suggest that you guys don't ever train that way when you're either teaching coaches or you're discussing concepts of programming? Is that something you avoid altogether? Do you stick in, you know, I don't want to say super high volume, but let's just call it twos to sevens. We give people what they're capable of doing. Okay. So we don't have, we don't have a, we, if we, if we want to go down this road, we can, but we, we truly believe in individualization that needs to be unpacked. Um, which means that you give someone on that day, what they're capable of, mm -hmm. not what I believe is principle, right? What they're capable of. So I, an issue, I, I just answered the question really that way by saying, is it possible? that someone could do a 1RM in their lifetime experience of fitness? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. But I'll tell you this, in the principles that we teach, that takes many years, not many sessions, years. And let me, let me be clear on that. Not, not three years, not five years. It's quite possibly in the theoretical model yeah, it's over 10 to 15 years of resistance training experience where if you choose to, if you choose to, you can do a 1RM. Again, we're not going to laugh at you, but we're also going to say, okay, great, you did a 1RM. But that actually makes absolutely fucking no sense to your life. You know, like it, you're still going to, so if people are capable of it, by all means, go ahead and do it. But not without all of that front end ramping. You know, uh, that, mm -hmm. that scaffolding of skills, that expertise and mastery of a particular movement. Um, and that, that comes through in lanes, what we call uh, motor control into strength endurance into maximal contractions. Um, now, implementation of that, good fucking luck. Because, you know, who in their right mind wants to show up and say, I'd like to get stronger. And they get 27 messages before they get to you that says, you're a fucking pussy if you don't do one RMs within six months and the pressure that's on the coach to sell that in their gym. Right. And, and now you're like, yeah, in maybe 10 years, you'll be able to do a one RM. Yeah. Good luck with that. Uh, would it, would it be fair to say that, uh, more broadly, the, this discussion is the, the concept of training age. 
Is that fair? Is that a fair statement? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I just okay. use different language for it, but right, right. Means, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I, but just I for like the people who maximum potential. That's what I like to use. Right. Is a better term. Yeah, yeah. Like, which which I understand that. Just I'm, I'm just trying to to bring in to bring in listeners who who may not be following right because obviously have a lot of respect for the content that you guys put out you personally put out uh, but not everybody can follow that so the idea of training age is to more broadly would be what you just unpacked which is i have to take into account how long somebody has been training how they've been yeah. what the stimulus of that training looks like what their competency what their competency and movement is and we would i would i would make a broad statement fast and pretty people in a, in a crossfit gym because that's that's my world you know, have a training age of like zero to one. They're very, very, very immature from a training age. I mean, yeah, is I'm that sure do you, a question in there? But I, well, uh, but, I, but but so like so, how do you manage that, right? So the where I was going with that is, we have you're dealing with a general population, very young training age, and oh yeah. and you just outlined you just outlined a problem, which is good luck using this approach so then my question i would pose to you is like yeah. so then what's the, what's the proposed solution or how what's the approach in order to m move in that direction yeah well first of all um uh, so it's it's education and then, and then implementation of what our primary principles are which is motor control first but uh and i'll come back and unpack that a little bit more but i want to okay. disagree with your your statement inside the question i think which is that you said i read your stuff and it may it may be hard to follow um, I think that's people not wanting to see that it's easy. I just want to make that statement. That could be also okay. seen a different way, but we want, everyone wants to make things complex. So when we say things that like OPEC says this very clearly, drink water, get sunshine, do weight training, do cardio, and then press repeat on that motherfucker. If people look at that and say, oh, I, don't, I, I can't follow that. That's someone who is suffering from cognitive dissonance. That's someone who doesn't want to believe that it's as simple as that, if I'm making sense. Now, I'm not saying no, you, you said that with that intention, but I want to clarify what, quote unquote, what you get from OPEX. Because what you get from OPEX, dude, without saying nothing, we don't even know how to make it as simple as that. Like it's, <laughs> you know, it's basically down to no no words now, you know, and I don't want to get to subjective realism based upon that, but, but that's the game. So how to change those people, it's really education, meaning like, you know, for that person, and this is what we honor inside the individualization process in OPEX, we have opportunities for the coach and the client, and it's set up inside of our systems as well as our gyms and our recommendations to coaches, to like talk these people through what they think fitness is, right? So wh what do you think fitness is? Oh, fitness is all these 27 things that I came into this conversation with, right? So do you think it's gonna be easy just to say, listen, fucking full body resistance motor control one day, easy aerobic the next day, and that's what you're gonna get for the next five years. No, that's not how it's approached, right? Eventually, if you were to strip away all the mechanics, that's ironically what they get. And if you can't see me on screen, I'm wink winging like the fucking secret to a whole ton of problems, right? Um, no, it's the behavior concept. It's behaviors like, uh, you know, because a couple weeks later, sure shit, they're gonna come in, they're like, listen, this whole like slow game progression, learning movements, etc. I got it, <sighs> but fuck, I mean, everyone's doing this shit and I see this fucking fast shit and all this shit. You see what I'm saying? So how do you fix that? I can tell you what you don't do. You don't say, don't worry about it. You're gonna get a piece of this in our class and we'll just make it work for you. So we'll make you happy. You know, we're giving what clients want, etc. No, no, you know what you do? You say, let's go sit and talk for 90 minutes because I need to rehab you again out of these behaviors that you think is fitness, right? So I should, I, I, this, I always get into trouble with this because it, it, by the end of it, especially with a CrossFit audience listening in, they're all like, that's fucking, it's all fucking crazy. So I'll back up and say, with all, of my, with all of my shit that I make mention of, remember my presupposition for people is vitality, right? I define vitality as people exercising forever. That's what I come into the, to the, to the idea with. I secondly also have this presupposition of autonomy. That means that I don't want them around in my fucking gym over time, right? That one is 
ridiculous to kind of like crack inside of the fitness industry, even in conversation. But I just need to say that at this point in time, halfway through, because everything I'll say here forward sounds actually fucking daft and out to lunch if you don't know what I really believe in. So I believe in autonomy, meaning clients over time know how to do their own programs with no coach or anyone involved based upon that. And then now they can teach their kids and teach others in their community, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, I believe in people moving forever, right? And so you have to have objective measures and a whole bunch of conversation around that. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, every fucking day you're doing something, right? Every day for the rest of your life, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and then you can reverse engineer everything back to answer all your questions. Oh, should we do this hypertrophy program? Is it leading to what our overall goal is for moving for the rest of our fucking life? No, then don't fucking do it. Like this is how you make decisions based upon that initial presupposition. And right. I'm not saying that's easy, right? That's fucking, that's not simple. easy. But hey, it's what, simple. What else it's simple. It's We're simple. Be unconscious users to this. Right to this folly over time i actually i actually moving i actually don't and i actually if if we were to unpack this if we were to like get i actually don't disagree with anything you've just said like none of it right and i and i and i would so i would say everything that you've just said through the crossfit lens so like everything you've said i agree with right like and uh what do you mean by that you would say everything i would say through the crossfit lens well i'm going to explain it to you in the terminology that we would use when we teach the course so when you're talking about vitality i would and again we could we could split hairs on words but let me unpack this for a second Mm. because i think we are in agreement i think i think they're i i I don't think we are well let me finish first so if we say vitality i would replace that and i would use a similar term i would say health now what does health mean the way we would define health right and again and again, it's, it's fine to disagree with it, but I'm saying I agree with what you're saying. I think we're just slightly off, like we're one or two degrees off. That's my personal view on on what I've just heard you say. If I say okay. health, what am I talking about? And if you're saying autonomy, I would agree. And if we think about, so the way CrossFit would define health is increased work capacity to cross broad time and modal domains throughout your life. So that's autonomy, right? We're not saying you should do one RMs. It's a part of that training if you choose to do so, right? But I'm looking at fitness forever, not for a short period of time. The games is an expression. I don't know that it's a great expression. It's cool to watch, but it's definitely not, wouldn't fall in the line of health, right? I don't know training to that degree is healthy. I don't know that it creates long-term uh, health and fitness. Uh, it arguably um, could be detrimental, just like any sport, if you're going to take it to that level. So, um yeah, no, I agree with you. And I think if you are running a good facility, at some point, you should be teaching athletes how to move. They shouldn't need you there. They should understand the basic concepts of very general, you should, you know, lift heavy, heavy is relative, do cardio, and then you should mix those things up in whatever form that you choose to do so moving forward. So I, I don't I don't disagree with you. Man. You don't, but CrossFit doesn't do any of that shit. So you are inside a CrossFit. Well, so, so you're, that, explain so you explain person, to me your understanding of that right there, right? Because when CrossFit you say CrossFit doesn't, doesn't do any CrossFit of that. CrossFit does not have any model set up outside of a performance model, right? The, the whole concept is that you call it, it's a hijacked concept of health. But what CrossFit is going after is performance. Well, right? I don't know if that's true because your performance the comp- upon that. faster, stronger, uh, whatever you whatever you want to whatever one you want to say inside of it. So you can personally say you agree with that, but CrossFit and the, and the, it's like it's like CrossFit's fucking immune to to like being being against their initial methodology, right? And I get it. If you got something on your door and you're like, listen, we're different then then fucking say that but don't go back to the dogma of the original doctrine of high intensity you know modal domains etc what the fuck does that mean on the back end for autonomy right that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't mean anything and listen we we could even go into the research right which is okay. probably more publicly available but no one wants to talk about how after a couple of years everyone's scrambling inside of the intense model for new diverse you know tactics of keeping people going when really you're not sending people out your doors, 
and them doing their own programs for the rest of their life. That's the definition of autonomy, right? So when, we, when, you, when you use those words, um, you are saying you're agreeing with me, but do we, we differ on, on everything inside of that if you wear the CrossFit shirt when you say it? Uh, I'll, I'll disagree with the, so the, the performance aspect of it came second. That was uh, an outgrowth of it. And whether you think it's good or bad, whatever, like, I don't really care. But the, but the point is well, I, that is, that, that is not, well, no, no. But I mean, like, that's not the conversation that I'm having currently. I think there's two conversations here. It's like whether the value of competition uh, as it relates to autonomy or fitness in general, that's a separate conversation, but that's not what that's not what we teach in the course. That's not what we preach inside of the affiliate. But dude, it's, it's, it's what is bled and everyone hangs on to is the performance concept. Well, so let's, let me, let's be clear here. When you say everyone, that's not accurate. Like concept. there are a lot of, there are a lot this of people that do doctrine, that. This is your by the way. This is your Correct. doctrine. And this is the Correct. thing, right? You got, when you wear the CrossFit shirt, you have to own that. And I'm not saying I, pointing directly at you guys right, to it, right? But listen, I was on that side of the fence. So when you get sucked inside of the vortex of a cult and then you get out, you can't even you can't even recognize how that veil has been pulled over your eyes because you can't create your own language. You're kind of stuck in the language of it. So when I say just okay. to show the difference here, when I talk okay. about vitality, remember vitality is the other end of the performance spectrum, the other end, the performance spectrum with whatever you want to call it scaling 60 minute classes to do as best you can on a whiteboard that's called fucking performance okay so if we get semantics on oh, we'll perform and games and sensationalism etc you know we're never going to come to an agreement which we don't need to right but what i would like at least someone in the fucking crossfit universe to say is like listen we we have this you know idea that we're immune to being wrong on particular things. And we say that we're open to all these concepts, but we really don't apply them when it comes down to in the trenches for the majority of the gyms for the methodology. And that's where, that's where shit goes awry because it's easy to squeak out and say, well, we're the 10% of gyms who offer a version of individual design or et cetera. When if you wear, again, if you wear the shirt, it's based upon performance. And anything connected to performance, which the games is right next to it, if the games went away, that'd be a fucking interesting dynamic as to what you do then to get people into your gyms when you don't have sensationalism or these people like myself or the, the you know, role models of, of physical expression. Um, you know, if you don't have that, what do you have? You have vitality, which is consistency, autonomy, and moving forever. And then you're going to have a hard time looking inside the gym saying, now, where is everyone learning? Where is everyone learning such that we have a tremendous amount of graduated people after three to five years who leave this gym and never come back? And I'm going to I'm going to say that it's going to be very tough to find that inside of the CrossFit methodology gym. When you say tough to find that, meaning the the a CrossFit box is not producing people that are capable Graduate. of leaving there. Yeah. And they can capable of go, to go do their own and like never need somebody after that. Yeah. Yeah. To some degree, I wouldn't disagree with you. Yeah. And I think, I think just like anything, um, that requires a certain level of skill set from a coaching, which is only developed over years. And some people who are currently in the fitness space. Um, I disagree. I think it's, uh, again, what I fell for is we make it complex to sell dependency. Well, I think there's a difference between complex and experience. Uh, what? I think there's a difference between something being complex and me having enough experience to execute something well. I can have something simple and have no experience and not be good at it. I can also have something simple, right? You know, so I, I you know, at this point we're having uh, maybe a roundabout conversation about like the quality of coaching, which I think everybody would would agree can and should improve. Uh, I don't. Okay. Yeah. No, I disagree with that. I think what I was talking about is, you know, we make the concept of fitness and fitness progression to humans really complex. 
right? And of course, it's a, it's a little bit more complex than what I said earlier, weights and cardio, eat good food, press repeat on that motherfucker for the rest of your life, right? It's a little bit more complex than that, mm -hmm. but it's not. So when you try to like make that super complex, that's what I'm saying in terms of that being, uh, this, is, this is what makes it uncomfortable for me to see this in myself. It was a power grab. It was a power grab to make me seem smart, to make people dependent on the fitness concept and to actually enslave them to this whole fucking dependency model. Why? Because I wanted it to be all about the mitochondrial biogenesis from high intensity fucking occlusion, whatever fucking, you know, stuff. This is complex. So what, what should we do about it, James? We need to educate coaches. We need to like dig in on all the principles of fitness. You see where that goes, right? It's like, oh, wait now, maybe it's not complex. Maybe you wanted to make it seem complex because you needed to sell education or we didn't want the public to recognize it's that simple, right? It's like, oh, don't, again, don't let them know that, you know, patterns one day, pacing the next, press repeat, like get on with it. No, it's, it's much more than that, you know? So I hope you heard inside of that what I meant by complexity. I was the, the pusher. So it takes one to know one, you know, well, inside I think, of that. Yeah, yeah no, I think. The public out there, uh, that, that if that's, that's what I mean by simplicity. That's simplicity. Right, right. The answer is there. The answer has been there for a million years, by the way, also. 100%. We, 100%. we want to turn our back on that um, because, in my opinion, not, not to leave it on that, you know, dystopic note, but we got nothing better to do today. That's basically <laughs> What, what that's about. true well I, I i also don't disagree i would agree with you with regard to the wanting to look smart i don't know anybody that has pursued an endeavor that hasn't gone through some uh variation phase of battling ego myself included where hey I, i'm doing this not for the end not for the person on the other end of this conversation but the for, but for me well there's lots of professions that don't do that by the way uh just out of curiosity such as what physics math teacher uh, fucking plumber. Uh, listen, I can I mean, go on with a list of 100 people. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're going to use them as a whole, maybe, but like if you could easily pick out people, I mean, you could use math and physics where you could find plenty of people in that realm who are are narcissistic apps in absolute nature. Um, Man, um, that, you're way out of line on that comment. That, that's like uh, so, that's such a false claim. That's ridiculous. I mean, are you are you suggesting that there is not a physicist on earth that is narcissistic? Oh, you're talking about numbers now? Like, I mean, so you find three out of a million and then you're going to claim that a lot of them are narcissistic? No, I didn't say a lot. I said there are some, just like in every profession. So what was the, uh, what were we getting into there? It, it, no, my point is that, like, I don't know that that concept of what I heard was you describing, you know, ego that you went through, like you personally went through that. Right. Is that, oh, is that yeah. fair? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. What I, what I'm suggesting is I'm not sure that it's avoidable as far as like personal growth and development okay. in, in any endeavor. Like I, I, I don't I know. That that's, yeah. Maybe I don't, I, what I'm saying is I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I don't, broadly speaking, I don't know that it's avoidable. Maybe it is in very, in very unique circumstances. And I get it. I think it's part of growth in anything. I think if you, you could probably outline it in your own personal growth as, uh, in, in many ways, I know I can, I'm, I'm still probably dealing with it in many ways, right? Like th this podcast would be one form of it to be very candid with you. Like this, there, there is some layer of, of, you know, ego and, and producing something and then thinking the world would give a shit about it. Right. Like there, there is some underlying flavor of ego with regard to that. Um, and all of that to say, with regard to training and trying to pursue something, I guess my question to you is like, what's the alternative? If we know that it's so simple, but people are not doing it, keep it simple, but people still need coaches along the way. I disagree with the fact that CrossFit is, uh, has pushed to made it complex. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, right? Like we're not like, if you want to dive into it really and get nerdy, but the simple is just like, Hey, eat, eat regular foods, move regularly and do it in a variety of ways. I mean, if I was to really distill it down, that's what it is. So without hitting on the point that, uh, 
CrossFit makes it simple because that would be another podcast. Uh, the solution <clears throat> is, um, you know, first, I'll go back on the previous points. You know, someone has to create a concept of a beacon, you know, and I think that beacon is, you know, real high cognitive capabilities when you're 87, um, functional capacities for what you need to do when you're 87, and being really content at 87, um, whatever whatever way that gets you there. And uh, so I'll just say that that would be the definition of the beacon. And there's a lot of things we're doing today and selling 25 to 40 year olds that with what we think we're selling them that's helping, it's not getting them to that 87 that I just described. So the beacon leads all the shit that comes before it, right? So I'll start with that, you know, to your point okay. of solution. Solution, someone has to have the fucking balls to say, this is what we want the end result to be, right? So this is what I want the end result to be is that, and I hold that as the highest standard, okay? okay. Working back, I think is to change our fucking language. Again, this is why I talk about CCP coaches. I wanna wake them up prior to giving them the principles, right? So uh, language starts with that and start with simple language. You know, do some patterns of resistance one day, push, pull, lunge, squat, bend, and core. And that can be colored, but that can be simply taught to people. And then do pacing the next day, which is basically just sustainable aerobic work, preferably outdoors in nature or to some kind of you know, um, degree. And you just repeat that thing over and over for the rest of your life. And the challenges that can come inside of that are lengthy and fun and enjoyable and creative and intuitive, et cetera. But you're never, you're never, you know, requiring a coach inside of that. So the way that I got there was not through, oh, it must be systems of six years of academic knowledge. And then we spit these people out and then they stand up in front of a room with a polo shirt on, and then they speak to these individuals and talk about how it's all complex, the mitochondrial biogenesis, mechanic overload, and all this shit. That's not the way to get there. You start there with the simple language of that presupposition of the beacon and what makes it easy for people. The last solution, which is something that I, I keep pausing on it prior to making mention of it, is to make more young people aware of the fact of physical sovereignty earlier in their days. Now, how that gets implemented, woof, that's a fucking complex, nasty, dirty topic. But, you know, gone are the days where, you know, we have these physical standards uh, that are embedded inside the public education institution, right? And listen, I'm not on a high horse here. <laughs> so let uh, me, let, before we fucking couldn't, people we get... Could, we couldn't possibly agree more here. Just okay, for the I just don't know who, yeah. I'm, who I'm talking to, so I want to be careful of that. Okay, nope. so listen, you know, and that can happen in multiple different ways, and it takes a whole fucking rewiring, right? Rewiring meaning, like a lot of parents need to be woke up first. <laughs> so again, get I that, agree. Get through that, and then now all of a sudden, and if you think that you know parents are not needed inside of that academic nurturing, you're fucking mistaken, like you're way out to lunch on that. So it has to be a full family concept change, right? Where everyone gets on board, where the mom and dad says, listen, son, um, I know I got things to improve, right? On my own nurturing and my own learning for physical capabilities. But, but the expectation is by the time you're 18, and this is just whatever language you want, by the time you're 18 right. and you're finished with this educational institution, if you fucking ask me, like, how many carbohydrates are in a bagel, I can slap you in the face, right? <laughs> or if you, if you say, um, you know, how to, how to make a fucking shirt, you know, I can punch you. Or if you're like, what is bending? And how many reps should I do for bending? You know, I can kick you in the leg. I'm just giving you some humorous anecdotes to, like, nope. what learning is, right? Right. So the, the, what I just mentioned on the last point, people can't even spend a half hour, at, like, contemplating on a couch, thinking about that notion. They're like, oh, there's no fucking way you can have humans be able to know about how to nurture themselves and, and uh, live a free physical life. There's no fucking way you can do that. And when you come up with that, you are the fucking problem. You're the problem because you are selling, again, back to that previous notion, this meta power around what you want to have. You, you want to control the idea. That knowledge is not free. That knowledge is super complex. Do you see how it comes through based upon that, right? No, it's fucking simple. If you put it into younger minds, 
It will rip apart and deconstruct the entire fitness dependency model landscape because people will be like, exercise? Oh yeah, I fucking do that every day. You don't need to teach me anything. You know, I know, oh, broccoli. I know what broccoli contains. I know why it's good. I know what glycolysates are. I know what DIM is. I know what indole 3 carbonyl. I know how much fire, you know what I'm saying? And if you're like, oh, there's no fucking way humans can learn that. You're the fucking problem. You're the problem. Yeah, I don't, I, we're so definitely that's not my solution. That. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you there at all. I think we, I like, I do, I, I agree with you, you know, but I, it's, it's weird. I feel I may, and I might be misunderstanding this. I feel like what you're saying is that this is simple and there, and there shouldn't be a need to guide anybody through that. That's what I hear. Right. I don't think that's in what the you're future. Saying. Yeah. But what does that look like? I guess is the, is the more broad question. I have no idea. Yeah, no, that's uh, a great question. I philosophize yeah. on this one all the time and excuse me for stopping you on to finish your no, question. No. It was something Go different, ahead. but you're the I, guest. Because I philosophize on that all the time, we can't wait. We, there's there's no predictions, right? There's no predict, dude. <laughs> after the past two years, if you think that you can predict <laughs> things of like, no, 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 I'm being more serious on this point. No, no, I know I'm you like, are. Where does health and fitness and the professional fitness coach fit into civilization and the importance of that person? It is fucking disgusting how low on the totem pole we got over the past two years, right? So what I, the point I'm making on that, that's an indication. That's a signal that there's absolutely no fucking hope for what the current system has for the spread of information to the knowledge of physical freedom. So can we do this like halfway game to all these adults, you know, and coaches can teach people and we'll move people towards consciousness and ever listen i that's my game right i'm fucking trying to do that but mm -hmm. i don't kid myself in thinking that that's a successful proposition that's going to have like quote unquote impact you know will we have impact on maybe two percent of humans across the globe for the next 60 years okay maybe right yeah, okay sure but what happens to the other 98 percent all of them will be stuck for years and years and decades and decades inside of this dependency model of fitness. So to find the halfway what you were just asking there, right. I think we need to put pressure on the responsibility of the public of this free knowledge. That's what I think we need to do. And then we go in, like this. Listen, in what you form? know it's free, you know yeah. it's simple. What the fuck do you plan to do with it? And if they go, well, I'm gonna need you for three years to do this intensely, you go, no, 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 this is free. It's simple. What do you do with that? Now, is there in-betweens in there which will make people happy and I'll still keep selling courses and people still keep showing up to your gyms? Sure. In my opinion, though, that's all unconscious folly. That's my truest opinion based upon that. It's all, it's just like a game we play. Eh, this is making you happy and making me happy is all fun. But we're still not making people autonomous and we're still not sticking on the simple language that I think could be the the fix that needs to happen like tomorrow, right? But Let me ask. just think about my statement, right? My statement sounds fucking stupid as, as shit, right? It's like, oh, so just a second no. now. So that no, means I don't. that all, all fitness will deconstruct tomorrow. It's like, yeah, so <laughs> think about me. Like, I mean, I'm not selling that whole complex education scenario anymore. That's basically what I'm saying, right? So like, you just rip the whole thing down. Well, that's basically where we have to start tiptoeing towards. So let me ask a question then, because uh, I like I like the thought experiment. I do, I, and I and I think we probably agree on a lot of things with regard to society and their their viewpoint on health and all of those things. Um, what I don't see, I don't see that happening, unless. Well, but let me explain why. I don't think I, I I don't see that happening unless there become negative repercussions for not figuring it out. At which point now I think we're having a discussion that you're talking about, which is like, I don't think you're going to be able to rip all of that down unless there become negative outcomes for not pursuing that in its most simple form. Seeing like, you know, like just moving daily or not eating like shit or something like that. Uh, because right now it's, I would argue that it is maybe you could maybe throw it in the bucket of it's rewarded, but it's definitely not punished. Oh, oh, for sure. And that, now we're getting into just like, liberties and freedom you know of, for sure of, but that's you know, what i'm saying and individual without... responsibility oh but right. i mean 
Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you on that as being a, a notion as to why that wouldn't like fall through. Listen, hey, I, I just want to highlight. I want to highlight I'm something. Deeply, we I'm also we did a, we did agree. We did agree. I just so that we yeah, get that on the record. We yeah, did agree on yeah, that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, there's there's a lot of a lot of nefarious actors behind that entire schema just to make people uh, seemingly looking like they're uh, they're connected and having all these virtue signals. You know, we're in the whoop oh. band or all these these <laughs> metrics. You know, it's like oh, this is this is for your health. It's like no, this is a long term play for big pharma. That's what the long term play is. Okay, what's uh. Number one, I appreciate the conversation. What, what's your what's your kind of outlook for the next couple of years with OPEX? What are you guys pursuing outside of just continuing to do what you're doing? Is there anything else you guys uh, have on the horizon? Yeah, nothing outside of that. I mean, we're, you know, um, to, to come down from uh, what I was just mentioning, um, we're just going to keep, you know, trying to wake coaches up. That's it. That's what we're going to keep doing for the next number of years. That's our, that's our beacon. Uh, that's what I think... A lot of people in this business and uh, uh, folks who want to have a future, you know, uh, in this business, um, I think they they still, you know, really believe that we got a lot of positive things to share. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll continue to, to, to keep pumping that. And I'll just stay here in my office and, um, you know, uh, when they say, you know, step in front of the screen and talk to these people. Uh, just say more nice things than you say negative things, and we'll be okay. So I, that's probably the that's probably the role for the next couple of years. Okay. If uh, if people want to kind of start digging into OPEX, uh, where would you suggest somebody start? Kind of getting into some of your content and, and and just having discussions with you guys in general about like what that methodology looks like, what your mindset is with regard to all of that. Where would you point people? Yeah, you can go to opexfit.com. O p e x f i t dot com. You can get all the information um, and uh, dig into uh, um, Learn Our Rex. Our team has put a lot of work into just trying to create this uh, avenue for people to get more of that "quote unquote" OPEX language and knowledge, mm -hmm. and um, that may be helpful for for uh, some of the public. I would say it's like our initial attempt to reach over coaches, and okay. um, it, you know, it, if you guys know from trying to build anything, you know things don't get built in a couple of months. So we'll probably have, you know, 10 years of uh, iterations of this thing until, you know, 10 years down the road, my daughter, when she's, you know, 25, will be at college somewhere and be like, dad, this person came up and was like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. I just learned it from this website called uh, LearnRx, you know, um, where it gets to the public and it doesn't go through the coach. And that's probably our, our tiptoeing into uh, you know, jumping over coaches and getting to the public uh, about what this uh, what this freedom is of which I speak. Got it. Uh, I appreciate. It. I, I think that's uh, I think that's an incredibly audacious pursuit, and I and I have a massive amount of respect for that. So, you know, kudos to you, man. I think that's great. Cool. Listen, dude, I, uh, as much as we do disagree, I, I have a massive amount of respect for what you've done over the years for the exposure that you've given people to the, to fitness in general. Uh, and, uh, and <laughs> Jay will tell you, nobody likes to disagree more than me. So I actually thoroughly appreciated this conversation, you know, cause I, I, I think, yeah. I, I think more, I think we should disagree more. Uh, I think it's healthy. I think the idea of disagreement is not accepted in society anymore. And I think uh, that was part of the reason I, I, cause I, when we asked you to come on, I was like, we're going to disagree on some stuff, but that's not the point. The point is not to disagree. The point is to have constructive conversation and unpack ideas. And I think I understand you a little bit better. I hope the listeners understand you a little bit better and OPEX in general. Um, cause I agree that we should all be a little bit more open to that and pursue and challenge ideas. And uh, you know, this is a very, very small arguably maybe not an important por portion of that, but the, but the idea is to pursue it. So I appreciate it. Yep. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very absolutely. much for coming on James. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks for checking out this episode of the best hour of their day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you and your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. 
If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.